I'm Larry Jamison. I'm an endocrinologist. I trained as a physician scientist. I'm currently the dean of the Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania, and I oversee the health system at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm Leslie D. Groot. I'm the guy that started the book uh, 30, more than 30 years ago. Uh, I spent most of my career at the University of Chicago, from which I am currently emeritus. I still, however, do have an appointment at the University of Rhode Island as a uh, research professor. And uh, I live in Massachusetts on the shore. The, the endocrinology text is published on a four or five year cycle. So between editions, uh, you know, clearly there are major advances in the field. Uh, Publications come out on a weekly basis in the specialty journals as well as general journals. And so we, we always try to identify uh, major changes and make sure that we incorporate them either as new topics or, or within the existing chapters that have new authors or just updates on literature review. Uh, so in every disease area, uh, there are going to be major changes. Probably now, uh, diabetes is the one that's got uh, the greatest change is because of advances in the field. Uh, I would say though each one, if you look in the parathyroid field, the calcium metabolism, uh, metabolism field, new clinical guidelines come out almost uh, every three to four years. Uh, if we look at the genetics of endocrinology, uh, we, we understand more diseases every year than we did the year before because the genetic basis of these disorders uh, makes it apparent and then we can understand the, the physiology and, and possibly the treatment. Uh, before the last edition there was very little on the causes of, of low phosphate or hypophosphatemia. Uh, there have been a number of breakthroughs in that area just to be you know, one example of how the genetics changes how we think about endocrinology. I think one of the things that has changed, that always changes in the last couple editions has been the addition of uh, understanding of genetic causes of endocrine disease. I mean, it's a field that really didn't exist with the first edition, and now is a very important aspect of it. With each year, there are numerous new genetic syndromes that are identified on the basis of the gene being identified, and maybe, you know, with that comes the hope that sometime something can be done. Uh, to specifically treat a disease previously unable to be managed in any way. We, I think we, have, we also have, uh, along with this, in this edition, we're thinking more about the impact of uh, obesity and diabetes as an epidemic that needs to be treated and uh, amplifying our sections that deal with that problem, for example. They're trying to bring the very best in uh, scientific medicine to doctors around the world. And uh, trying to find the best people, uh, we are happy to cover the world. And we have uh, representatives from Australia and England on the editorial board. And we have authors from every country in the world practically. And the book is used. Uh, we know that the audience is worldwide. In every chapter, as we take on disorders, we're looking at the incidence of the diseases around the world, and they're not always the same. So if you look at something like iodine deficiency, it's going to vary around the world. Things like type 1 diabetes have a different emphasis globally. That can be a clue. Uh, what are some of the risk factors, and why do they vary? Why should an autoimmune disease uh, be different uh, among countries. Is it genetic predisposition? Is it environmental influences? You know, some combination of that. Uh, the treatments that are used around the world are not always the same, uh, either because of the availability of medications or the medicines that have been approved. And since our audience is global, it's important that we make sure that we identify uh, the kinds of medicines that can be used in different parts of the world.